Okay, so we did get to the bottom of this whole situation, right? Yes. And Rob showed up, it told us up. exactly what was up. Yeah, I'm just looking for it. <laughs> Engine coolant over temperature condition. Only one of them. Nice. That came out of the inner core cooler. That's just just a quick little pop my finger in there. Pop a finger in what? <laughs> oh, hey now. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's a lot of... So, really, I can't imagine it coming back. Flowing backwards, but coming out of the turbo, maybe. But the problem is, we got an overheat situation. So, that doesn't really... I don't know. None of it lines up yet. We don't know. We don't... All right. So, there's a lot of unknowns, right? We see some oil in the intercooler. Uh... But the other problem we have, possibly some knocking. Oh, wow. Huh. So, definitely getting... I need new charge tubes. <laughs> green ones. I know a guy that'll... <laughs> I know a guy that'll buy those gray ones, huh? So. Really? All right. Yeah. I'll sell them. Okay. So... I'll wear the green ones right now. Yeah. <laughs> we're a little concerned because we had an overheat situation and we had possible knocking. So, we're going to fire this thing up real quick and just... Seems like the knocking was coming from over here, so we're gonna show you that. And plus we wanna hear it, see if that's, you know, in this environment, is if it's he, real. Is it gonna be okay with the first tubes off? And... Yeah, yeah. Ready? Yeah, I'm ready. There we go. We don't need that in the way. Here we go, here goes everything. Keep going. Maybe a little bit of warm up, then we hear the noise. I don't know, cause it was like a. It was like right after it. And we've yeah, checked, was... we've checked coolant levels, stuff like that. Yeah. You know what? I remember when you changed the oil the next day. It was a little quieter. Yeah. After I changed the oil, it was yeah, quieter. Yeah, it, it was a lot quieter. Right now, just now, it sounded perfect. Right. But that may just be because it's cold and oil stick and stuff like that. Well, it starts smoking when it starts. Yeah, but that smoking may have been coming from your turbo. If your turbo is spitting oil out and it's sucking into the intake. Uh, I don't even... I think we run it for a minute. Because I don't see... Open a grudge. Yep. All right. All right. Because I don't... Uh, I'll keep my eye on the gauge. All right. Hey, I'm not tall enough. That works so well. <laughs> so far we ran it for a minute it got started it got up to like three bars pretty quick uh, it started I actually started to hear a little bit of engine noise I don't know what it was um, but there was no pressure in the in the reservoir tank the fans were running and it was just getting warmer and warmer just sitting here idling so I am not I don't really know I'm not an expert in that field for sure maybe it's, something doesn't show itself until it's in the boost yeah yeah and it uh, also spit oil out of the turbo, if you can see all that. 
Turbos, I would say turbos hurt for sure, but I'm not sure why. Uh, but I feel like we have some kind of weird overheating. I don't know. All right, what's going on, Danny? Getting ready to do a compression test with the. Yeah, so, so far, everything looks good. We pulled out the spark plugs. All the spark plugs, there, here's one of them. They all look like this. I don't think so. I can't tell if that's focused. Focus, you son of a. Yeah. Oh yeah, look at that. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Now bring bring your hand up to the spot. Oops, I'm on the lens. Anyway, so they all look like that. Uh, they all look pretty much just like this one. There we go. Just like that I one. I like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a compression test. Uh, Roughly compression test something, and see. Uh, I don't think there's going to be an issue there. I think we're dealing with some kind of I don't know why overheating and hurt the turbo for some reason. All right, so we did one cylinder, went up to 180. I'm gonna say that's probably pretty good. Let's do another one. We're on two, two cycles. We're on the passenger Just side cylinder now. Not as strong. Definitely not as strong. No. That's number three. Yeah. Where's that? What did it go up to? I mean. Oh, 160. Yeah. Or you went over 180 on the other one. Yeah, the one went 180. Let's try number one. Do that one again. The first one was the middle. Mm -hmm. Do it again. Yeah. yeah. And do one more cycle. Yeah, definitely not as strong as the other cylinder. Not as strong, but it's not bleeding down. Right, so we're going to pull this out. We're going to let the pressure off of this one. Pull it out. And uh, do number one. Okay, here we go. I'll do another one. Cylinder number one. Let's see what we got. It's good. Yeah. Cycle. Oh yeah, so it's in between uh, one and three. It's stronger than, it's stronger than true, or stronger than. The one, one and two are both at 180. Yeah. Uh, three to 160. Two was a little stronger than this one. It shot over. But yeah, it's holding it. It's good. We don't have a compression issue, I don't think. We took apart to fix uh, Everything looked good. Yeah, everything was good. We pulled out the spark plugs. We did a compression test. We had 180, 180, 160. Uh, they, I would think they should both all three be 180. But, uh, you know, whatever. You said we got some codes? Well, we got some codes. What do we got? What do we got? We got O2, O2 sensor heater circuit bank one sensor. Have you seen that one? 1130? Uh, 135. 11 oh, oh, 135. Oh. Probably a bunch of res result of a bunch of getting hot. Okay, then we got uh, uh, engine oil pressure sensor switch high voltage. Oh, I've never seen. We'll have to look at some of these because I don't know. And then we got one I expected. Engine coolant over temperature condition. Only one of them. So. Yeah, there's that. So what are we going to do? Run it? See if we have noise? Look for noise? Yeah. Well, we're going to open up the garage door and then run it. Why would we do that? Because Donna doesn't want to pass out. Yeah, this thing stinks. No, french fries. Yep, french fries and applesauce.
kind of an indicator those look like important parts to me but especially i mean somebody yeah. took the time to machine that part so it's almost like a piece of a synchro or something but i don't know what's in there ultimately gonna take the transmission out <laughs> <laughs> so he might as well give you a transmission exactly <laughs> <laughs> so he, you need a tranny he needs a motor very very low miles <laughs> we used once on the on its lid twice and put in the grass yeah. Shit. Well, why, why do you think it's getting hot? It's not driven enough. <laughs> <laughs> That's called a void. What's, what do you think, Danny? I think I'm open for suggestions. I'm going to commit. I say it's one of two things, the things I've said from the beginning. I didn't think, well, water pump, I didn't really say, but same thing. Thermo, either thermostat's stuck and it's not letting water flow or the water pump is out. And the reason I say that is because it's hot back here, got up to uh, three bars. It's not even remotely warm up here. I mean, nothing. It's, uh, it's like cool to the touch. So the water is not making it from back here to up there. That in turn is causing the turbo to overheat, the motor to overheat, and the turbo spit some oil. It doesn't seem to be spitting oil anymore. I don't know if it'll be okay. I've changed the oil again. Yeah, so yeah, we'll yeah. get it. What we'll do is we'll get it uh, flowing the water where it runs without getting hot, change oil again, and it may be fine because maybe that's just oil that super, you know, was super thin, made its way through the seal and is laying in the turbo now, and because it quit spitting this time. So we're gonna dig into this water pump and to the um, thermostat housing. Oh, look at that! Oh, look at that! Okay, so we pulled the um, water pump housing off. We suspect that the water is not being pumped or it's being blocked by the thermostat. So what we're gonna do is bump this thing over and see if the impeller turns. Okay. Nope, no turn. Boom! All right, so we found the problem for sure. No doubt about it. At least the overheating problem, which I think is probably all of the problems. That's, you know what? That's where the noise was coming from. You guys kept saying there was a noise coming from this side. side. Bam. Okay, we found the problem. This thing's fine. It's gonna be fine. All right, we're gonna fire this thing up. We'll show you the problem. Ready? I'm not sure to let it run. Uh, I'll tell you when. All right, go ahead, go. Say it loud. All right. Here we go. My bad. You're good. You're good. <laughs> I yeah, thought it, hurt. It, it didn't even move. Uh, that is what. That's what your noise was, though. On this side of the motor, it totally makes sense. Water pump. Yep, that's right there. All right. Okay, so uh, all over the internet, everybody said that uh, you got to split the case. I guess by split the case, that meant take this cover off of the case. Okay, I wouldn't really consider that splitting the case. Splitting the case, I would say, is like, you know, you got a motorcycle, you pull the engine out, and you actually split the case apart, right? Yeah. I wouldn't call this splitting the case, but, you know, whatever. Technicalities. That's like some kind of little oil cooler, huh? Yeah. That's cool. Hopefully it goes on only one way. So uh -huh. I'm going to pay attention which way. Just pull it, it can out. only be the right way or the wrong way, for sure. Okay. <laughs> All right, so that cover's coming off. We're splitting the case. As somebody, somebody, some people would say, I guess. Very nice. Very nice. And our problem will be revealed in a minute. Let's see, I think I see it already. This wire should be loose. Oh, yeah. Stator wire. Yeah. Holy sh**. 
There's our problem. That would be the problem. That is pretty straightforward. So here's what happened. This gear right here drives the water pump. Yeah. As you can see. It runs along those other gears right there. <laughs> Look at the bald gear. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus. Chewed to death. Gone. Oh, that's, that's yeah. yeah. So it's All off of track. Look at it. It's not even centered on that on that bolt. Okay, so we did get to the bottom of this whole situation, right? Yes. Rob showed up, it told us up. exactly what was up. Yeah, I'm just looking for it. <laughs> um, but basically what's going on is this. I think we kind of showed you, but let's just take a good look because we have the cover completely off now. And uh, this is a mess. I kind of feel like if you're running an E85, you better change your oil a lot. Because I feel like E85, it's tax plastic. And that there's a possibility that that is what this is all about. I've seen E85 actually personally attack plastic. Because, let's be honest, the rest of us are running these plastic gears. Yep. And I haven't seen a lot of issues. And pretty much all cars have more miles than this one. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Smart yes. but, but technically, actually, all of the cars in our group do have more miles than this car. So, and they've all ran, we, we've ran some 85, but briefly, and you know what, man, I hope I changed, I did change the oil, I don't know how soon after, I'm not the greatest at that myself, but anyway, that's what, that's what the deal is, look at those gears, I hope I can get, hopefully I'm getting a good shot, they are chewed up, gone, done, so, and what those, the, the job of those plastic gears is to turn, uh, well, probably not just the water pump, there's a lot of them, as it seems like maybe there's, other purposes I don't know anyway once we get in there we'll know but basically those gears are responsible for turning the water pump and the water pump kept quit turning obviously you can see why so yeah that's it so we'll come back when we know more in a different video this one's done we're about bye we're out see ya, see ya.